In this video, we'll cover optoelectronic device, the LED, light emitting diode. It's an optoelectronic device. Optoelectronic because it is ha it has the semiconductors, which is a electronic device, and it works on the principle that the photons are emitted when the current is passed through the LED. What, how it works and how it is made, let us cover the basics. One is that LED is a junction diode like any other diode, but there are certain requirements. One is it is heavily doped. doped. The concentration of the majority carriers is relatively higher and it has a transparent transparent casing the casing is transparent so that the photons come out when they are emitted and it is operated in forward bias unlike unlike the photodiode which we have covered in other lecture Photodiode is operated in reverse bias, but, but LED is operated in forward bias. Now let us first have a look at what is a junction diode and how it can be made to function as LED. Just the slightly, we, we will just recapture the basics. This is P side, this is N side of the junction, this is the junction boundary and as you know on both the sides of the boundary you have depletion region and here you will have positive positive and here you have negative negative this is because of the diffusion of majority carriers holes are majority carriers here holes holes and electrons are majority carrier here on this side this is one side I am showing by shaded portion and this is another sh side so that we have clarity on the two sides two different sides so this uh, the, the, uh, the depletion layer is created because of the diffusion of the majority carriers now in case of LED this depletion region is provided with a transparent casing when it is manufactured and now when we give it a forward bias forward bias means positive is connected to P and negative is connected to N this is the forward bias now when the forward bias is given we know that in forward bias this is the forward bias voltage and this is the current it is in milliamperes so when the forward bias is increased the majority carriers please remember in forward bias the current is due to majority carriers in reverse bias current is due to minority carriers so when it is forward bias this is positive charge so the holes from this side are made to cross the junction boundary and reach here so holes which are majority here but here you had electrons as majority and there were electron holes also created by thermal emission so electrons as majority because of the doping and electron hole pairs are also there so when there is no forward current the number of the minority carriers number of minority carrier is less but when these majority carriers cross over to N side they are majority here but here they are minority so you have I am showing for this region more number of the minority carriers come so as compared to the situation where no bias is given the N side had less number of minority carriers 
and when the bias is given and has more number of minority carriers so the the concentration of minority carriers increases as a result these minority carriers which have been injected from this side injected from this side they combine with the electrons these minority carriers here combine with these majority carriers e h and when they combine a photon is emitted the requirement for the visib visible spectrum we know that the visibility is point from point 0.4 point 0.7 micrometer is the visible spectrum of light and corresponding to this the energy gap should be about 3 electron volt to 1.8 electron volt so if you have energy gap of at least 1.8 electron volt between the conduction and the valence band this is conduction band this is valence band and when this gap is greater than 1.8 to 3 and it is in this range with this energy gap when photon is emitted you have visible light and this to have this kind of energy band for making light emitting diode we use compound semiconductor compound which is gallium arsenide phosphide this will have energy gap of about 1.8 electron volt which is suitable for meeting our requirement so when when the electron hole pairs are combining they will be emitting a photon which corresponds to the visible spectrum of light because here the energy gap is 1.8 electron volt in case of this type of semiconductor so the emission of the light we will in fact get a red light with this combination and uh, if you draw the with the increase in intensity if the intensity of if if the current is increased if you increase the current you will have higher intensity of light the intensity of light will increase up to a point beyond which it will not in fact it will start falling so there is a relationship with the current and the intensity of light uh, which increases initially means in the beginning there is an increase increase of the intensity another aspect which one has to keep in mind in case of photodiode is that the reverse bias voltage is uh, means the limiting voltage for the reverse bias is quite low if you give more than that voltage then it gets damaged so that aspect has to be taken care we also when we draw the circuit always show a resistance here a resistance is connected in series with the light emitting diodes so that's all on the basics of the light emitting diode there are advantages of led are following that it doesn't need time to warm up its functioning is instantaneous it has a very fast response and power consumption is very low in case of the light emitting diodes you must be seeing recently light emitting diode bulbs are also being made and they also have relatively Uh, uh more rugged performance and a longer life so these are some of the advantages of light emitting diodes and it appears that maybe much more improved version of leds will come in future that is where the future lies for emission of photons and the light so that's all on the led as photoelectronic device thank you